Here we're going to be looking at some of the details behind natural selection. Natural selection here might be familiar with the finches and the birds' beaks, and also with these two different colored moths and how they're able to survive in different environments. So first off, well, how does biological evolution happen? Well, there's two main ideas on how traits or genes can be passed on to the next generation. One theory is that individuals evolve where inheritance of acquired characteristics are somehow passed on to the offspring, or the concept that with these leaves being at the highest point on these trees, because giraffes stretch their necks to constantly eat, those individuals evolve to have kind of longer necks that then go on to the next generation. And that ends up being the case. What does end up happening is the theory of populations evolving. And this is a selection of genes already within a population. Changes within those genes' frequencies in a population leads to that change over time. In this example, we just have some giraffes that are just naturally born taller because they're able to acquire food easier, they're able to survive, or more likely to survive, therefore they pass their genes on to the next generation in that way. So we can also see this with human-directed selection through domestication of animals and plants. Sheep is an example of domesticating animals. We could see wheat or corn would be an example of domesticating plants. We also have breeding for extreme variations. We could breed for very small pumpkins, or I breed for very large pumpkins. We also have dog sizes, the Great Dane being a very large dog, and the Chihuahua being a very small dog. Those extremes of the variation. Now within our evidence for the selection um, theory of change, natural selection, same process, however, there is no human direction. In this case, we could have ecological equivalence through an analogous anatomy. So we're looking at the fin of a shark, a uh, penguin, and of a dolphin. We have a fish, a bird, and a mammal, both developing these structures to aid them in being able to swim within the water environment. Also, we have the same process without human selection, We're looking at natural selection with homologous anatomy. This is where there's a common ancestor, where if we look at the human arm, the cat, the whale, and the bat, while they may all perform very different functions, grabbing, walking, swimming, flying, they all have the same basic structure or anatomy. This is, again, evidence for natural selection theory of change. Within this theory of change, we have drug and pesticide resistance. This becomes an issue. If we have a collection of bugs that are eating a crop or eating a plant, we have this first generation. Then a pesticide application is applied, and for whatever reason, the red bugs have a natural resistance to that particular chemical, and a couple other of the other color are able to survive just based on their location, maybe when the spray occurs. The next generation, we see bugs of the same number, so when the same chemical is applied, well now we have that selection process for those red bugs being able to survive in greater numbers, meaning this chemical spray um, has these bugs have a resistance to this pesticide or this chemical application. Now Charles Darwin came up with the idea of natural selection here. Uh, in 1831, Charles Darwin took the role of naturalist in the ship HMS uh, Beagle, and he sailed on a five-year navigational trip around the world. You could kind of see his track here. We studied a wide variety of plants and animals across the globe, but of particular importance, he was uh, known for stu his studies he did in the Galapagos Islands, and they're located right here. Here's a little image here of what they actually look like. Different sizes in a small cluster, um, pretty far off any large mainland. This allows some very unique things to develop here. Now his observations convinced him that evolu evolution took place. Fossils of extinct species resembled living species in the same area. The Galapagos finches uh, differed slightly in their appearance, but resembled those in South American mainland. So even though they're separated by quite the distance, there's some strong resemblance that they may have migrated or traveled uh, from there. In 1859, he published his book, The Origin of Species. Uh, in it, he proposed that evolution occurs through the process of natural selection. Here's a copy of that. Uh, top uh, book here. So Charles Darwin, uh, he has made observations that eventually convinced him that evol evolution took place. Fossils from extinct species resembled living species in the same area. An example of this was his Galapagos finches that he studied differed slightly in appearance but resembled those in South American mainland, indicating that there may be some connection there. 
1859, he published his book, The Origin of Species, located right here, where he proposed that this evolution occurs through the process of natural selection. Now, even though we may know it, that is his most, quote, famous work, he was most proud of his work that he did on earthworms. He was fascinated by their behavior. He conducted 40 years of earthworm experiments that occurred both in the lab and in the field. So when you struggle with a lab experiment, just think he spent 40 years just looking at earthworms and amongst other things that he studied. He published his findings in 1881 in the book that we see pictured here. The book sold 6,000 copies in its first year, selling faster than the origin of species when it was first published. I did find an Amazon and hardcover for $45. There's also some soft cover um, options available for a reduced cost. Now the theory of natural selection, so he came up with the idea, but what is that theory of natural selection? Well, he observed 14 different finch species that differed mainly in the beaks and feeding habits. He concluded that the results were descendants with modifications from a common ancestor, or as we now term it, evolution, meaning there was an original common ancestor and that ate seeds, for example. Those that ate leaves, insects, uh, tool using and grubs and, and buds or fruit had to develop different beaks to be able to best match or fit the modifications uh, for their particular env environment that they were living in. In this case, the food item that they were eating. Here, the insect uh, eating bird has a very small and pointed beak, able to grab maybe small insects. Those eating buds or large fruit has developed a very strong beak to maybe break kind of a shell of a nut, for example. Now, the theory of natural selection, we kind of see evident here. Darwin was familiar with artificial selection used by breeders to produce animals and plants with particular traits. If you're familiar with maybe broccoli or kale or even cabbage or cauliflower, they all kind of go back to wild mustard plant. Through artificial selection, through breeding and selective breeding, I should say, uh, growers have been able to take the wild mustard and produce kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower uh, with modifications to certain traits, whether it's the stem or the leaves or the terminal bud or the flower buds, able to get all of these different uh, strains that we're maybe familiar with, but they all can be traced back to a common ancestor. Dog breeding is another example here. Dog breeds show an enormous amount of variability due to the target selection of particular traits by man. If wolf is the common ancestor, Europe, America, China, and India have all bred for different subsets of that selection process, but they all can be traced back to the common wolf ancestor. The process of natural selection, uh, these trait selection can occur in nature, uh, which he termed again that natural selective process, and this occurs in response to a number of conditions. There could be simple variation uh, in color within a population that's inherited, it could be bright yellow or dark brown. There could be competition. Overproduction of offspring leads to competition for survival. Who's the best fit for their environment? This leads to adaptations, where individuals with beneficial adaptations are more likely to survive and pass on their genes. Here we see the brightly colored one easily sticking out, easily getting eaten, versus the ones that blend in or camouflage a little bit better. And this ultimately leads to a selection process. Over many generations, there is a change in allele frequency. This is leading to the concept of evolution. Now, this theory of natural selection here also applies to kind of food. So Darn was influenced by uh, Malthus essay, uh, The Principle of Population, this is back in 1798, where populations increase exponentially while food supplies increase only in kind of a linear scale. Thus, food supply will limit population growth. So here we have, in this example, uh, our population growth. In this case, our population is below the kind of food threshold, so there's a food surplus. Then, over time, if population grows, there'll be a food shortage, and this will lead to competition in who's the best fit for the environment. Lastly, our four fundamentals of natural selection uh, proposed by Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace. He proposed that there were um, heritable traits to be able to come in, to be passed on. Limiting factors exist in all environments. Overpopulation of offspring lead to those that best fit. And reproduction by those who are that best fit, are able to fit that environment. We kind of see here initial allele frequency of all the colors is equal, but then there's a selection for, for whatever reason, in this case, the red circles. And over time, that allele frequency of the red becomes much greater, uh, and we see that the pink here is basically selected against as does the yellow.
adaptation of populations is the result of this natural selection process. So hopefully this kind of gives you some uh, appreciation for the natural selection process and kind of what Darwin kind of came up with uh, and was able to theorize based on his observations.